This mortal shall put on immortality. Amen, Richard? It's going to swallow us up one of these days. Amen? Immortality. Eternal life God has given us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? And we're here to prepare for that day. Amen? I, many times I'm, lately I've really just been spending time just meditating on, to see Jesus. I might have mentioned this last week, but can you imagine to stand before God Almighty, God Almighty coming to this earth in a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? He had a plan and a purpose for Doug. He created you, Doug, fearfully, wonderfully. He had a plan and a purpose. He created you. I mean, for me, that makes, man, what a difference God made Brad Ficklin. Hey, that's cool stuff, amen? <laughs> to meet him, to meet him who created me and just bow at his feet and say, thank you for life. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me salvation. Thank you for eternity. Thank you for forgiveness. Jesus, you are my very life. I worship you. I adore you. Amen. But just to see him face to face, what a day that will be. Amen. Amen. He's the God of eternal life. Well, one of these days, that mortality inside of it, that death is going to be swallowed up by life. It's going to be an incredible moment when we see Jesus face to face. And that's what we, you and I, are really living for uh, as Richard communicated here with these wonderful scriptures. Amen. This life is temporary. We have an eternal life awaiting us. Amen. And we'll really experience that when we encounter the living God. Let me read out of John 12 this morning. You guys are there. I'm not even there yet. <laughs> John 12, verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. And these then came to Philip, who was from the state of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. They wanted to see Jesus. Amen. How many want to see Jesus? There it is. I want to see this man, Jesus. We've heard about him. We hear that he forgives sins. We hear that he heals diseases. We hear that he raises people from the dead. We want to see him. Yeah. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. This is really about the glory of God. This chapter, these scriptures here are, are, are painting a picture of the very glory of God is what Jesus wants to communicate. And truly, truly, he says here, I say to you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But here's the condition. If it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. And if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. The central theme again of this message is the glory of God. We may have expected Jesus to say, for Jesus to say, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be crucified. But he didn't say that at that hour. He said, it's time for the Son of Man to be glorified or to be to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Jesus saw beyond the cross. How many know we're called to the cross? But we can only go, go to the cross as we see beyond the cross. We see beyond the death of ourselves into the glory that God has for us. Amen. That's a picture again, Richard, of what you just beautifully communicated to you. Beautifully communicated to you and I as believers. Heaven is real. Eternal life is real. Amen. And only as you see that and believe in that and experience that are we able to give our lives here in the now. Jesus saw beyond the cross, death and suffering, to the glory that would follow. It's so important for a believer to keep his eyes and his heart fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ and on heaven and on eternal, the eternal reward that he has for you and I this morning. We have to go beyond the fleshly. We have to go beyond the earthly. 
Amen? We have to go beyond the temporary as God's people. Can I get an amen? It's quiet in here. Come on, let's get a lot in this place. Jesus used the image of a seed to illustrate the great spiritual truth that there can be no glory. Listen, there can't be any glory without suffering. There's no fruitful life that you can have without a death taking place. There can be no victory in the Christian's life without a surrender. Amen. Of itself, how many know that a seed is just weak and useless? A seed in and of itself is just alone. I've got some seeds out in, 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 uh, in the uh, storage unit outside. There's some grass seed. And in itself, those grass seeds, they're not very, very pretty. They're kind of ugly. But those seeds have the potential to produce a beautiful green, green grass. Anybody see my green grass out there? Come on now. It's coming alive. It is coming alive. Amen. That was generated by a seed. A seed in itself is pretty darn ugly. It remains alone. But if that seed is sown into the ground, it will produce life. Do you see what I'm talking about here? It has to be sown. Everybody say, it's got to be sown. Many times we don't understand the principle of sowing. It is so important that you and I as believers understand that as a believer, I have to sow. If I really want a harvest, if I want the life of God, if I really want a ministry, if we want a greater church, amen, if we want a beautiful garden, you have to sow. Without sowing, it stays alone. How many feel alone this morning? If you want relationships, guess what you have to sow to? Relationships. If you find yourself alone, it's probably because you haven't sown. Jesus said, you will reap what you sow. Amen? If you sow abundantly towards people, and otherwise if you give up your life to call people on the telephone, amen, and talk to them and, and give them encouragement, give them life, give them hope, give them faith, you're going to reap something back by that sowing, amen? If you do it a little bit, you'll have a little bit of relational, relational Christianity back. If you do it a lot, you're going to have a lot of family back towards you, amen? It's all conditional upon our ability to give our lives and dying to ourselves and say, it's not about me, it's about God, and in being about God, I'm going to give my life in service to other people, amen? And in giving myself to other people, I'm going to reap a harvest. Amen. How many of you are you're here because you want to be fruitful? Amen. Amen. I show up to work because I want to be fruitful. Amen. I've been laboring. Jose and Jesse this morning, they're here this morning. They've been laboring. Jose's been working hard academically to, to start a career. Amen. He's been up, he's been down. Amen. Got some successes, got some failures. But he stayed sowing and sowing and sowing. And now he reaped the benefits of sowing, sowing, sowing. He was offered a job, a good job in his field of expertise. The sad thing about it, him and Jesse are leaving to Silver City, New Mexico. It's a good thing. It's a good thing, amen. It, it's, it, now he's reaping the reward of him sowing and sowing and sowing. And they're so excited to go on with God's plan, God's purposes for your life, aren't you? Jose and Jesse, look at them back there. They're glowing. Yeah, yeah, baby. We finally can afford some, some food. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I've been working hard for this thing. But I've been working hard. I've been sowing for a reason. There's a reason behind me sowing. Because you knew one of these days you would reap a reward. Amen. And the time has come. We're going to pray for Jesse and Jose this morning as they, as they leave. But I just wanted to point them out because they've been working hard. They've been sowing this morning. You and I, it's ridiculous to think that we can ever have a harvest. It's absolutely stupid to think that you can have a harvest into your life without sowing. You have to sow. That's right. That's our worship before God. Amen? Amen. You can't just come in. You know, so many people in their Christianity, they just want to take the seed. And how can I be blessed today? And just take in. They absorb. And it's all about me. All about myself. And as long as I'm getting my ears tickled. As long as my, my flesh... Is getting moved and I'm feeling good about things. Me, 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 me. You watch that, Christian. They won't last long. 
They won't last long in the faith. They won't last long in a church. They won't last long in a marriage. For sure they won't last long in a marriage. Just a matter of time before that thing is done. Honey, I've taken everything that I can from you. You no longer satisfy me. I'm on to the next best, best thing. Can I get an amen? That's good preaching, right? That's reality. That's what it's all about. And we do that in our churches. Once I've tapped out what you have to give me as a church, I'm on to the next one. And instead of sowing and sowing and sowing, amen, and then really uh, benefiting of, of the harvest of relationships. How many knows it really is about relationships? Heather and I got relationships all over the planet. We've got relationships in, our, in, in Africa. We've got a lot of great relationships here in the United States. We've got great relationships here in Albuquerque, amen, with you. But it's because we've sown into people's lives. We've given. We've served them, amen. And now we're reaping a harvest of a lot of people, amen. We've got some great relationships. Made some people glad, amen. I've also made some people mad. <laughs> That's okay in this thing. <laughs> Do you know where I'm going with this thing this morning? I want to encourage you to be a giver. That's why it's so important. I want you to communicate and hear from God on Sunday mornings. We're here to be a blessing to you. This worship is here to be a blessing to you. But you can't stay there. You've got to learn to take it in and then to give it out. Amen? Take it in. And then give it out. But you've got to learn to if you don't give it out, you're going to stop. You're going to get discontent. And, and there will come a time where uh, you will stop growing. You will not be able to mature in your relationship with your God, in your relationship with your spouse. And in any church life, you will not be able to mature and become the fruitful person that God wants you to be. Amen? So he says here, if any, if in verse uh, 20, 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears forth much fruit. Amen? But we can't have a harvest without sowing. There can be no harvest. There can be no reward without sowing this morning. And you will never... So, unless you first see that there is an eternal reward and an eternal har harvest for you in, the, in eternity as well as here. Okay, I'm not downplaying here and now. This is some of the fruit. Amen, right here. The fruit of our lives and the fruit of relationships. The fruit even of this building and of the garden. We've been working hard, church, for 10 years. Everybody say 10 years. Amen. 10 years we have been laboring in this place. Amen. And we didn't do that in vain. Amen. We're not just showing up just in vanity. We had a purpose in mind. That was to reach people. That was to encourage the saints. Amen. And it's growing and it's growing and it's growing. And I want to continue to grow, grow, grow. How many want to grow? In order to grow, you've got to give your life. Amen? And now is the time. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So now is the time for you and I to labor diligently, work hard. Amen? That's what we have to do. Jesus saw a harvest of souls coming to eternal life, heaven. And because He saw it, He knew He had to sow first. He had to sow His own life and give His life in death first in order to see a manifestation of a physical harvest in his life. Again, it's springtime. How many, how many made it through? You're glad you made it through wintertime. Once again. Yeah. Winter is over. Hallelujah. I just don't like that wintertime. But wintertime, it's very important time. Amen. That grass is green out there because during the wintertime, I knew if I did some preparations that come even the middle of March, that grass would be growing. I'm still out there getting the bad stuff out. I'm still out there watering. I'm still out there laboring for the right season. In due time, Jesus said, you will reap if you don't grow weary. Amen? If you'll pay attention, if you'll labor, if you'll do some things, come harvest time, it will be there for you. Amen? 